get for the pastor or a mansion for him or anything, but they just did amazing things with regard to giving. Grace abounded. And Christian, I want to tell you something. Scripturally, biblically, a church that pleases God in the areas of finances will be abounding. They'll be giving generously. And I think that's the way we ought to give tonight. Toward this project. See, it has nothing to do with our giving to our local church. It has to do with grace giving. With abounding. And I think that God wants to see grace abound. And so here are some promises in it. The result of it. Verse 12. Verse 11 says, Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us... I'm in verse chapter 9. Which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. The result of abundant grace giving is, first of all, you'll accomplish what man can never accomplish. Secondly, that you'll be able to see God do what man can't do. Uh, you'll be able to uh, have the blessings of giving. You'll be able to see the source of giving. But then the Bible says, the result is it'll cause us thanksgiving to God. What is thanksgiving a result of? What happens before you give thanks? What? Being blessed. Blessing. Blessing. Every year in our country, we have a time when we celebrate Thanksgiving. And the reason we do it is because we just, man, God is just blessed. And He's been so, He's, he's abounded toward us. And friend, if you have trouble with the area of Thanksgiving, the reason is because you have trouble in the area of grace giving. And if you have trouble in the area of grace giving, you'll never see blessing and you'll never be able to give thanks. And one of the things that is a sure sign of an ungrateful person is that he is a Scrooge. Ungrateful people are Scrooges. I mean this. We're going backward here, but you find out why somebody's just done. They're ungrateful for everything. Well, it's not good enough. Well, you know, it could be a lot. It could. Well, I don't have. Well, and they're just not, not happy about anything. You find some people and they're just like, man, God is good. And I'll tell you why. It's because of blessing. Now, let me point something out about that Thanksgiving. It's because of what you saw, not because of what you got. That abundance is what you saw, not what you got. In other words, you say, I gave all that? How in the world? God told me to, I did it, and He did it. What will you have seen? You'll have seen God. You'll have seen God. Do what you can't do. For I'm going to just tell you something. It's a wonderful thing to be used by God. It just is. Just to be where God does something. Through you and by used, I don't mean, you know, God sent me over here and I got the job done. I mean, God did something with me that I couldn't have done. He used me by grace. And if you let God use you in this area, one of the things that you'll find out is that you'll be grateful for it and you'll be happy about it. Why would the Bible say God loves a cheerful giver? Well, because that's what happens when you give God's way. You're happy about it. It's a free will. It's a, this is what I want, this is what I desire. And the result of it is that you have reason to give thanks to God. Not for what you got, but for what God allowed you to give. Well, I'm just grateful God let me do that. Let me be there for that. Let me participate in that to see him. Verse 13, Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorified God for your professed subjection, uh, or let me read verse 12, I skipped over, for the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So we're able to, it's also abundant in thanksgiving, but friend, it also gets things done. It gets the job done. Now, how in the world is God going to do take care of this translation project? And I think it's Rwanda, isn't it? I get the country all mixed up, but the language is Runyon Kore. How's he going to get it done? I'll tell you how he's going to get it done. Through our giving. Through our giving and, and giving of others, not just us. But it says it supplieth the want of the saints. How is it that God supports his ministry? through the giving of his people. It is unscriptural, it is unbiblical for the lost to support God's work. 
You know, in our church, we have a policy, and it may seem strange to some, but I think it's by conviction from this passage of Scripture, that we don't receive finances from the lost. If an unsaved person wants to give money to this church, and they do, surprisingly, they do. It's really amazing. We'll be out door to door, knocking on doors, inviting people to church. They say, well, you know what? I'm not, you know, I'm not really a Christian or whatever, but I'm for what you people do, and I want to make a contribution. And we tell them we don't accept contributions. We're sorry. Really? You don't know? The only people that contribute in our church are people like us, church people. You've got to come to church to give in our church. I don't think that's scriptural. Because why in the world does God need to supply the needs of the saints with the lost? Shame on you, Christian. Going out to a lost and dying world and standing on a street corner and begging from them as though your heavenly Father can't supply your needs. Shame on you, Christian, saying, well, why don't they get money from here? Or why don't they apply for this government grant? Or why don't they, why don't they, why don't they? When God can supply the needs of the ministry through the saints. We're all backward in this thing. I've said it many times. You won't find us raising support for this local ministry at Walmart. I've had people say, Pastor, you know, you ought to do a fundraiser. No, we're not doing a fundraiser. Fundraiser is trying to give, get people who wouldn't give. It's trying to trick them into it somehow. If God's people want to give, let them give. If they don't want to give, then don't give. But God supplies the need through of the saints, the want of the saints through these individuals that want to experience His grace and have a cause for thanksgiving. I don't think it's simple, but this is important. Then he says, While well, by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God, speaking of those that have had their wants supplied, for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. You know, Christians are supposed to be liberals. You're supposed to be a liberal. Yeah, just a, what is liberal? Liberal means free will, freely. Liberal's not a bad term, it's just been abused. And Christians are supposed to be liberal. What's that mean? Another word would be generous. Generosity to the point of liberality. You know, the word liberal, though, has to do with freedom. Has to do with freedom. Same word that we get our word liberty from and do you know if you give based upon your ability you'll give in handcuffs I can't I'm restrained from that I don't have the freedom to I, I mean it says 10% but I don't even know I mean there's just it's not there I don't have it and I'm telling you if you give grace giving You'll give liberally, unrestrained. And you'll even be able to give, don't misunderstand me on this, but you'll even be able to give carelessly. Oh, you're not going to have to think a lot about it. You're not going to have to say, well, I've got to be really careful. I'm a steward of the Lord's money, and if I give carelessly, then I'll waste God's money. No. No. I, the Holy Spirit of God will help you with that. There have been times when I've had opportunity to give. I said, no, I, don't, I just don't feel led to that. And it's not because of lack of liberality. It's because of, uh, of leading of the Holy Spirit of God. But when you want to give, you'll be able to. It wouldn't it be great to any time you wanted to give to be able to? Yeah, sure. How about being a yeah, sure kind of guy? Sure. Sure. Of course. No problem. Yeah. You bet. Oh, you can count on it. I will. And if you are a grace giver, that's the way you'll be. That's the way you'll be. And it's fun. It's fun. And then you get to see God do what God can do. And it's just wonderful. It really is. Let me read a passage of Scripture to you that I think is a good illustration of this in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 36. Exodus chapter 36. This is a time when the children of Israel were under the tithe or becoming under the, the law and the laws with, that regarded tithing which were so important when they neglected that 
God said that, that they had robbed him of tithes and offerings, and the result of it is they, they got themselves captivity as well. This is a time when they are under...